So I'm putting the final touches on this drill press table and one of the things I wanted to address is the lower lowering and lifting mechanism that comes with most drills. So this is obviously set over and forward to accommodate the end boring drag, end boring jig, but normally this is set um, centered on the table and back against the column and a lot of times these tables impede the handle used to lower and raise your table. Now somewhat conveniently this drill press I got um, for free from a friend whose dad had two of them in storage and it didn't come with a handle. It actually had a couple missing pieces but it didn't come with the handle so I've been using a vice grip to raise and lower this, which means this does not get in the way of the table at all. But I saw an article on Woodsmith that uses mitered gears, one connected to the shaft of this pin, and one that leads to a handle crank in the front to raise and lower this from the front of your table. So I have two old gears, which are almost the right size, um, with a bushing this hole would fit over there from an old push lawnmower so these are really old and they would work running like this quite well but mounted perpendicularly it's going to be tight which is why they miter these gears so i think what i'm going to try and do is, is since these have not a ton of value past i broke the push mower and took it apart and kept the pieces i think i'm going to try and grind down the front of these gears to give it a little bit of a slope so that maybe this will work for lifting and lowering that table because to buy quality mitered gears are really expensive. So a little bit of context for those gears. This is the old push mower I was talking about and I actually didn't take this apart to get these gears. I broke this so it was no longer going to be used for um, anything really. Um, I, I cracked one of these wheels. So I'm um, I decided to take it apart and keep the pieces and use the pieces for something rather than keep the whole uh, assembly. So this gear I'm using came off one of these shafts on the edge like this and then it ran inside this wheel and those those gears mated so by turning this wheel this in turn turned the whole spindle so that's where I got those from. This is actually a bearing that goes right there. So you can kind of find gears like this in a lot of stuff. Newer components are going to have plastic gears. So my method to start this process was basically to remove the material off the top side of those gears, enough for them to mate and move um, when mounted perpendicularly. So I had a 5 8 inch dowel because the opening of these gears is 5 8 of an inch. Um, and I just mounted on the dowel so it would be easier to hold while working with and I just started using an angle grinder and, and I had the pad flat and I just started removing the bulk of that material on the edge. Now I know in order for gears to mate they have to be pretty uniform so I was just really trying to move slowly. I, at one point I switched to a file because the the angle grinder was re just removing too much material and, and constantly switching the surface around. Um, trying to keep those the, the material removed as even as possible. So as you can see at this point I'm switching to a gear and I'm just kind of taking down that front section and I would test as I go and figure out what I needed to do and then keep removing material. So they sell gears like this online and they sell them cheaply but they also have expensive ones. The link to the Woodsmith article the gears are like $35 a piece and it wasn't something that I wanted to cheap out on and then regret it, which is why I decided to make my own because if these were in a lawnmower, they could definitely withstand um, anything I'd be doing with the drill press. So as you can see, I got them to a point, I ended up splitting that dowel so I could test them out easier. I got them to a point where they were, they were connecting and spinning. And then this is um, just taking out the inside the reason for using this half inch nut is not only will it fit on that shaft, but the back side of these gears, these keyed grooves which matched um, a pattern on the lawnmower so that it couldn't move. So this half inch nut actually fits in there just about perfectly.
So if I have that nut in there, I could slide this whole gear onto that shaft. I could add a set screw right about here, and this probably won't move. But in order to make that happen, what I'm going to do is fill in this negative space now with some epoxy. Now, I'm not that epoxy isn't necessarily for strength, but it's strong enough that once I have this nut in here and fill these voids, this nut won't move around, and I think that that should work. So this method with the epoxy worked really well. Um, if you have a similar system or you're, you're doing something similarly, you just want to make sure you're mounting that nut very square in that hole. If it's off center a little bit, it's not going to go on the shaft of the drill square, and then your gear won't turn squarely. So this is after I'd already put, um, tapped it and put the set screw in. And then this is the second, uh, the second gear, which ends up, I think I'll show later in the video, I end up tapping this all the way through and through a threaded rod in order for it to, ta to attach. But basically with the tap, I just do them by hand and I just can uh, drill up from smaller sizes, do my tap, and then I countersunk the top a little bit so that screw was flush. And then the fit onto the, the drill press table was nice and tight, so I hammered it on there making sure it stayed square, and I haven't had a problem with this one on there at all. And I set that set screw, and you could actually spin this gear by hand. So the main measurement I needed to start my jig would be the height of the gear, um, referencing it off the table. So I used this diameter threaded rod I would need, kind of mounted loosely by that mitered gear, and got my measurement using a level. So in order to test this out, um, after I got the height I needed off of this plywood, I ended up adding an inch and a half 2 by 4 here, just so I had something to screw all my pieces into. And then I screwed this long piece in here so I could connect these test pieces here. You could see this one, and that one has holes in it because it was kind of a process of trial and error, figuring out how far away from this side to drill that hole. But once I'd used that level to get the height, the height stayed consistent. You could see this is my height mark um, on my pieces. And then I, I tr tried to prop it up and get it as close as possible to get the test hole, and I finally got one that works. So right now this works really well because gravity is on your side going down. It doesn't work as well going up, but I think that's just because my jig has um, a lot of play in it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll show you how it's working now. I'll probably clean up these gears a little bit more. And then the nice thing is, is now I have all of my measurements because this is, um, I have all of these measurements for height and width away from this gear with this kind of mocked up jig in order to make something more stable. So after I got this spinning pretty well, uh, well with the gears, I cut that piece of plywood I had in half because it was long enough I was going to use the other side to build the final mechanism. And I don't show it so much um, in the video, but there was some fine tuning I did on the gears. Um, I started taking them down a little bit more and shaping the fronts more to a taper. But you could see in the video they stay pretty much the same. Since I didn't film making this jig because I didn't know if it was going to work, I'm going to kind of reverse engineer it for it now so you could use the same principles on your drill press because everything is going to be different. So I basically just use that long piece of plywood as a template because in order for this to work, drill press table will still have to be able to slide on top of this. So if this was to work, I would have to cut those holes on the back side of this piece in order for those um, bolts to still go through the holes in my drill press table so that the drill press table could slide back and forth. Now you could attach this to the drill press table, but the problem with that is when you go to use the end boring jig and you move the drill press table, you'll disengage the gears. So by attaching this plywood to the table on the table saw instead of the drill press table I made, this will always the gears will always stay engaged. It's a little bit harder to do that, so if you have a drill press table that you, is stationary, it will be much easier to just attach some brackets on the bottom of your existing table to get this to work. So then, once I had that piece on there, I added this inch and a half piece of um, 2x4, and that is because 
the thickness of my table is about an inch and a half. So I wanted to work without having to account for the depth of my table. So then once I had that, you saw me use the level to put the gear in place and get it level, and I measured the depth from the underside of my table to where that gear would be engaged. That number from the underside of my table to where the gear would be engaged turned out to be 2 and 5 eighths. So you could see how my, my lines are just about 2 and 5 eighths. This has been a little bit tweaked since since I took it off, so it's a little bit off, but it was two and five eighths. I kind of eyed how far away it had to be in order to line up, and that's why I have these multiple holes. So I basically got all that wood in place, and I held the gear up, and I gauged the gear from the end of the table to where it had to be. I got a rough number, I think it was like three and an eighth. I have it on here, it was three and an eighth. That number ended up being wrong, so I just flipped my pieces over and drilled more holes until I, line it, I got it right with that depth. So now I have the depth of those holes. In order to quickly attach these two slats to this jig to see if it would work, I just screwed a piece of half inch plywood on the side of my 2x4 and then just attached these in place, and that was how I got it to rough work. So very simple, but now I could use all of these measurements on my final piece. Piece. So the piece I'm using is, eight, is roughly 18 inches by 12 and a half. I drew the circle on the underside because if I slide that end boring jig over, it lines up with the edge of the table. So this cannot go past the left hand side of my table. Before I took this off of my table saw, I drew a mark for how far away it was from my fence, and that is a little over a quarter inch. So I transferred that measurement to here. And now I'm just going to put some dados in this because I'm just going to attach two thicker brackets on this with dados. Much simpler now that I have the measurements. So the pine I used for this I might end up regretting, but I did have it laying around and it was nice thick stock that was already square because I squared it up for another project. And it was a little over, I think it was about an inch and a half thick. So I ended up making a couple passes, my table saw to get those dados. And the nice thing about doing it this way is if you're a little unsure of your measurements, you can move everything around. So this is just lining up that reference line I made on both my jigs. And then I could mark where the threaded rod goes on the new piece. So before I took this off, I had noticed that this gear was definitely below center of this gear. So I measured the distance between the two by measuring the top of this and then to the top of my uh, threaded rod in there. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. So my original Two and five eighths is more like two and a half. This needs to move up about, this one needs to move up about a sixteenth of an inch. So to account for that on here, since these sit below the plate line, but this will still sit on top of that metal base, I just measured from here up two and a half on both and drew a line. Now the nice thing about this is I could drill my holes um, they're going to line up almost with this line according to that jig. But the nice thing about these, I'm not going to attach them yet, and you'll be able to move them back and forth and get a perfect fit. So I happen to have two bearings laying around that are perfect for 5 8 inch threaded rod. So I countersunk some holes. Um, I think the outer diameter of those is the exact outer diameter of um, hinges for inset doors, the cup. So I just used that drill bit in order to make that hole first, and then I drilled a 5 8 inch hole into my piece. And you don't necessarily need bearings, but you need something between the threaded rod and that wooden hole. Otherwise, over time, that rod would eat away at that hole and you would get a lot of wobble um, in your piece. And then I just temporarily attached those pieces. So I knew that because this threaded rod from my um, original kind of mock-up, this threaded rod runs so close to the table, I knew I would have to probably notch out both of these or at least one of these. So I had to notch out just a little bit of this front one in order to get it to fit. But that's why I mounted these blocks as close to the edge as I felt comfortable with because the further from the edge they were, the less I was going to have to notch out. If they were closer to the center, I would have had to take some pretty big chunks out of them. And then I put my threaded rod right through 
and you can see that now these gears are much closer to being on the same plane. This one might be a hair high, which I could adjust if the, if the gear starts skipping. So as you can see, I have this moving fairly smoothly, definitely smooth enough for my liking. And all it really took was adding this stop collar right here so that the shaft stays um, in one place. It doesn't move to the front. I also happen to have this handle that I took out of an old, took off of an old adding machine, and that gives me better leverage than the um, vice grip. And this is what I'm going to use on the piece once it's finished. Um, I'm going to shorten this once I see how the um, drill press table, how far it comes out on there. The drill press table probably comes a little bit close, so I might not take much off. And I just have this table clamped on here. So what I'm going to do now is trace the underside of here, because I'm going to have to cut those slots in here so that my drill press table can still ride um, on the top of here. I'm also going to make some marks because I'm going to have to put bolts in this table and really ratchet it down onto the metal table to hold it in one place. I've noticed if there's any play in this system whatsoever, the gears start skipping. So lastly, the nice thing about this system, if you want to make something like this, as long as you have the height of this um, in line with the height of this, what I've been doing is um, I have this pipe clamp to the table and I'm able to shift it back and forth to get it perfectly lined up. So I don't really have exact measurements for that. I've just been able to loosen this up and shift it until I got it working the way I wanted. You might be able to notice the table's a little off square, which does not bother me. You can see in the back it's a little off square. Since this will be under the drill press table, you won't be able to see it. And in order to get this square, I would have had to cut out a lot more of material from my two blocks in order to slide it over more and square it up, which means I would have been getting really close to the hole for my threaded rod. So I opted for off square. So to finally attach all this from the underside, I drew marks of where all my pieces were. So for those two winged pieces, I actually drilled these oversized. The slots are about a half inch. I drilled three quarter inch holes just to give myself a little wiggle room and then jigsaw that out. And then the holes for the bolts are three eighths of an inch. So I drilled those out and countersunk them because the carriage bolts will sit in those and not um, hit the drill press table. So then when it came time to put it back together, I glued those, those two slats on now that everything works. And I just kind of refound their positioning by putting those screws in their old reference holes. And then this is, this is working on that threaded rod. And like I said before, you could see I, I end up drilling through that whole gear through the other side and tapping it as well. So that um, there was a little bit of wobble in this gear because the inside's hollow and I didn't want to epoxy it to the shaft in case I ever needed to take it apart. That would really be a pain. So I just threaded it through the whole way. So the screw that goes in there goes through that whole gear as well as the threaded rod and I actually put a little nut on the other end now it doesn't move at all and then I had a, a nut and a washer on this so that I had a nice big thick washer up against that gear just as it added added uh, rigidity I would say on there and I end up you'll see I end up having to take that off because it's there's not enough clearance so to put this together I just um, putting this back together was fairly easy because those holes lined up perfectly which uh, where I had uh, drawn them. The bolts are a little bit long but it is what I had. So then I could slide that gear in there, put everything back together and you'll see I end up having to take that nut off because it's just I don't have enough space in the back for it. And then the nice thing is is with this table I have enough play in it I could slide it and get it to where I want it to be and then um, get it to mate the gears and then I could could clamp everything down in place so it is nice that there is um, some movability in it you're not kind of stuck with your rigid measurements in case you measured something off so then I put another stop collar in front of that first bearing so it can't come out and eventually I will cut down this threaded rod but I just kind of put it back in place with another stop collar lined everything up to test it out and with it back in place everything worked really well. There was a little bit of tweaking to be done, but I got it to to raise and lower quite well. And the raising mechanism now works works pretty nice.
So as I was building this, I was a little nervous because when it came time to raise it, the gears um, were definitely tougher to move. So I was nervous with the added weight of that drill press table, it'd be really hard to move. But the leverage I got from that handle and um, stiffening everything up so those gears can't move just made this a really smooth moving mechanism. So you could see with that table on there, it still works. This, um, lifting crank on here for a couple days and it seems to be working uh, really well. I haven't had a problem with it. I don't really anticipate a problem with it just because unless it shifts on the table, I think it's going to stay in place. But the nice thing is if it does shift or ever I have to take it apart, it's easy to readjust all those pieces. You can see I have the hardware under there. So if you just loosen these bolts, you could shift um, the platform quite easily. So I also, you could see I put um, a washer and some screws on this back bearing so it stays stays in place. So really the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim probably to about here and just move this assembly forward so this doesn't stick out as far. But for now this is pretty good and the table fits on top of there. Um, it's, it's flat so I'm happy about that. You could see now that it's all assembled what I was talking about when I said it's crooked. And honestly, that does drive me a little crazy, but not crazy enough to change it. You could also see when I was talking about how I didn't want to cut into this further because it would just get really close to my hole. So, I mean, I would probably have to cut almost to this mark, and I just didn't want to do that, so crooked it is. And then the other nice thing is because I mounted that to the table, I could still use the tabletop as an end boring jig and still use the crank to raise and lower this. Really the only time I would ever not be able to use the crank is if I shift the table off 90 if um because this is one of those drill presses where the table can can switch on an angle if I did that um the gears would disengage but honestly I don't think I've ever actually done that with this. Usually I just shim on the table if I need a slight angle anyways. So fun little last minute screw up. I went to cut this threaded rod and someone stopped by my shop and when I came back I would already taken the handle off so I measured off the base of the front of the table and unfortunately cutting that there means that since this is at an angle you could see it pretty well what, what sort, of, sort of angle it's at from up here that when I went to go attach this it was hitting the table. So luckily I had a coupling in my in my stash, 5 8 inch coupling I could put on this threaded rod. This is a 5 8 inch thread rod. I don't know if I've mentioned that yet. And um, I could extend it so there's another little baby piece of threaded rod I cut here. And that seems to be working fine. So this is now done. So I'm pretty happy with this build. Um, it was a huge upgrade to go from using a vice grip to raise and lower your table to a handled mechanism. It's just, um, I'm still getting used to the convenience of it actually. And um, there's not a lot of play in the gears, which I was a little worried about. I was a little nervous about it getting out of sequence over time, it moving or shifting, but I've been using it for a little bit and it seems to be holding up fine. So that is an added bonus. I was also happy that I got to use materials I had laying around my shop, even though you could easily build this by buying some gears. I only had to buy some nuts and some stop collars for this build.